Hello, my name is Ryan Aponte, and I'm going to go over theory of mind, the ACES project, discuss how communications are useful for the theory of mind, and then with the direction for future work. Humans use the theory of mind and for the mental states of and makes predictions about other human beings. For example, uh, Maxi eats half his chocolate bar and puts the rest away in the kitchen cupboard. He then goes out to play in the sun. Meanwhile, Maxi's mother comes into the kitchen, opens the cupboard, and sees the chocolate bar. She puts it in the fridge. When Maxi comes back to the kitchen, where will he look for his chocolate bar? Well, he left it in the cupboard, so he'll look for it in the cupboard. The Artificial Social Intelligence for Successful Teams, or ACES project, works to extend this theory of mind to Artificial Social Intelligence, or ASI agents. So an ASI agent would say that the uh, chocolate bar is in the cupboard. So uh, data collection is done in the ACES testbed. Um, and in this uh, Minecraft environment, participants uh, search for victims. It's a disaster scenario complete with um, rubble, which can hide victims. And the testbed includes the time pressure, uh, which encourages teams to work together. Uh, so further information on the ACES testbed, um, there's three participants that form an ad hoc team, which means that they ha have no uh, prior experience working together. Um, it's worth noting that effective communication has been recognized as difficult for ad hoc teams, which is where an ASI agent might come in. Also, during an emergency, such as an earthquake, it might not be possible to uh, put teams together uh, that have prior working experience. Um, in the testbed, participants are given maps that include different information, and they're given markers to indicate the location of victims. However, uh, different people have different keys to decode the meaning of a marker. Um, it has been found that excessive communication can harm team performance. So only using necessary communication, combining that with the theory of mind could be useful. Um, data collection, uh, trials are expensive to run. And once they're run, uh, automatic speech recognition transcripts are labeled by hand, which is a time consuming process. Also, uh, this requires listening to audio recordings and there can be background noise or muffled speech, which makes accurate labeling difficult. Um, in summary, language data are limited. And an example utterance is provided with uh, a number, a time code, and then the speaker and the utterance. Uh, so we code these utterances. Uh, communications are tagged with high and low level codes. And it's hoped that um, team attributes can be predicted based on these codes, such as final score. And an ASI agent could suggest that uh, teams use more of one type of communication, like closed loop. In closed loop communication, participants acknowledge the utterances of one another, and this can be used to um, reduce misunderstandings. So to adjust the data uh, limitation, we first look at a few methods for generating synthetic data. The first is role-based, and that could include replacing a word with its synonym and parsing and filling a grammar. We plan to use a role-based method, and this uh, type of method typically leads to parsing. There's also um, interpolation, which is uh, stitching together uh, components from multiple sentences. Uh, but in the testbed, participants most frequently speak in sentence fragments. So stitching together two short sentences uh, could be difficult. There's also models such as transformers and GANs that can produce very realistic human speech, but we don't have sufficient data to train this kind of model. As previously mentioned, uh, role-based um, data generation often begins with parsing. So currently we're looking into using Spacey and the Berkeley Neural Parser. And this parser is uh, very high accuracy and produces BNF grammar, which is shown to the right. After parsing, we might uh, generate synthetic communications by replacing words associated with the grammar. So this prepositional phrase could be replaced with, uh, which is she could be replaced with a different word. Um, so for future work, we plan to make a generator to use additional utterances. Um, we want to look into making prediction based on the team data, such as overall score or to identify if there's a leader. Uh, we'd like to see the kinds of communication used by higher and lower performing teams. And if at some point we have sufficient data, we'd like to uh, train models to create um, 
uh, for their synthetic data. The authors would like to acknowledge Joseph Campbell, Rachel Burson, John Dolan, the RI community, and the sponsors and mentors of the RISC program. This work was funded by the Robotics Institute. And here are the references 